Today we will learn about oral submucous fibrosis. So in this video what are we going to learn? That is what is oral submucous fibrosis, etiological factors of OSMF, etiopathogenesis of the disease, clinical features that suggest to diagnose OSMF, histopathological features that suggest to diagnose OSMF, classification or staging or grading of OSMF and various treatment modalities for OSMF. What is oral submucous fibrosis? It is an insidious chronic disease affecting any part of the oral cavity and sometimes the pharynx. Although occasionally preceded by and or associated with vesicle formation, it is always associated with juxta epithelial inflammatory reaction followed by fibroelastic change of the lamina propria with epithelial atrophy leading to stiffness of mucosa and causing trismus and inability to eat. This definition was given by Pinborg and Sirsat in year 1966. Now we will see what are the factors that contribute to oral submucous fibrosis. Local factors that contribute to OSMF are arecanut and chilies. Systemic factors that contribute to oral submucous fibrosis are nutritional deficiency, autoimmunity and genetic susceptibility. Now we will see every factor and how it affects OSMF. First, we will see arecanut. It is the only proven etiologic factor for oral submucous fibrosis. Arecanut is the seed of the fruit of the small genus of slender palms in the family Palmacia. Arecanut is the endosperm of the fruit of the areca catechu tree. Arecanut consists of alkaloids and flavonoids. Alkaloids, it stimulates fibroblasts to produce and synthesize collagen. Flavonoids, it decreases degradation by increasing the stabilization of collagen by enhancing the cross-linking of collagen. Then, trees. Capsaicin, an active extract from capsicum, is the active principal irritant of chilies. The use of chilies has been proven to act as an irritant for mucosa which can damage the oral mucosa and produces changes in connective tissues. Excessive chili intake can cause blood and tissue eosinophilia suggestive of allergic reaction which might cause changes in the fibroblasts. Nutritional deficiency. This condition has two schools of thought. According to some, nutritional deficiencies such as vitamin A, B and C, iron, etc. can increase the mucosal susceptibility to irritants like arecanut. While others say that nutritional deficiency occurs OSMF cases due to decreased intake of food due to burning sensation and decreased mouth opening. Anabia is seen in many cases of advanced cases of OSMF. Then autoimmunity. Various immunological studies have shown raised immunoglobin like A, E and D. Autoantibodies to gastric and parietal cells as well as thyroid, microsomal, anti-nuclear, reticulin and anti-smooth muscle antibodies have been found in 65% of patients with the disease. Then genetic susceptibility. The genetic factors like increased factors like HLA, DR10, DR3 and DR7 have been reported in OSMF. Studies have shown that six collagen related genes including COL1A1, COL1A2, COLase, Lyoxase, TGF1 and CST3 are found to be located on different chromosomes in OSMF patients. In genetically predisposed people, beetle nut and pan chewing render the oral mucosa susceptible to chronic inflammatory changes with decreased T lymphocyte count and higher null cell count. As we have seen the etiological agents of OSMF, now we will see how now, we will see about the clinical features of oral submucous fibrosis. It is mostly seen in males and in younger age group that is between 20 to 40 years. And clinical features of oral submucous fibrosis can be divided into two for better understanding. First are the prodromal symptoms which can be also known as early OSMF. In this, we can see burning sensation in the mouth. Appearance of blisters, especially on palate, ulcerations or recurrent generalized inflammation, excessive privation, defective gustatory function and dryness of mouth, appearance of small vesicles in cheek and palate and petechi. Now in advanced OSMF, we can see blanching. As the disease progresses, the oral mucosa become blanched and slightly opaque and white fibrous bands appear. It is seen due to impairment of local vascularity as a result of fibrosis. It can be localized, diffuse and reticular like. Palate and the fascial pillars are the areas involved first but can affect any part of the oral cavity. 
Sometimes hyperpigmented areas adjacent to the zones with the loss of pigment can also be seen. Fibrotic bands. First, we'll see the fibrotic bands in the fascial area, then in the buccal area, and then in the labial area. Soft palate, the density of the fibrous deposit varies from a slight whitish area on the soft palate, causing no symptoms to a dense fixation and shortening or even deviation of the uvula and soft palate. We can see hockey stick uvula or bud shaped uvula. Circular bands can be seen in the rima oris region. Labial mucosa becomes rubbery and difficult to avert. Bands in the pterygomandibular raphe will cause difficulty in mouth opening. Buccal mucosa bands will cause inability to whistle or blow and difficulty in swallowing. Bands in the nasopharynx area will cause referred pain to the ear and a nasal voice as one of the later signs in some patients. Bands in the auditory tube opening will cause hearing problem. There will be loss of stippling of gingiva and blanching with the loss of papillae can be seen on the tongue and there is restricted tongue movement. In the first picture, we can see pallor or marble-like appearance of the opening. Here in the first picture, we can see difficulty in mouth opening due to presence of As we have seen the clinical features of oral submucous fibrosis, now we'll see the histopathological features of oral submucous fibrosis. Increase in the clinical severity of the disease may be accompanied by epithelial hyperplasia or atrophy which is associated with an increased tendency for keratinizing metaplasia. The most striking feature of connective tissue is the presence of dense collagen bundles randomly oriented and extending into the underlying striated muscles. Inflammatory cell infiltration includes lymphocytes, monocytes, plasma cells and occasionally macrophages. In this figure, we can see an atrophic epithelium and the hyalinization and homogenization of collagen fiber. Now, as we know the clinical and histological features, we will classify it according to the most prevalent classification that is Khanna and Andrade et al. in the year 1995. He classified the OSMF into groups. Group 1, very early in it, we can see Mouth opening is normal, burning sensation, excessive salivation, and acute ulceration and recurrent stomatitis. In the histopathology, we can see a fine fibrillar collagen network with marked edema, blood vessels dilated and congested, large aggregate of plump young fibroblasts containing abundant cytoplasm is also seen. The inflammatory cells consist of PMNLs with few eosinophils, normal epithelium with some hyperplastic epithelium can also be seen. Group 2, mouth opening is 26 to 35 mm, soft palate and fascial pillars were the areas primarily affected, buccal mucosa appeared mottled and marble-like where dense pale depigmented fibrose areas alternated with pink normal mucosa. Red and erythematous patches can also be seen, widespread sheets of fibrosis is seen. And histopathologically, the juxtaepithelial area shows early hyalinization. Collagen still appears as separate bundles and thickened. Plump young fibroblasts are present in moderate numbers. The blood vessels are dilated and congested. The inflammatory cells are mononuclear lymphocytes, eosinophils and occasional plasma cells. Flattening and shortening of the epithelial retipex with varying degree of keratinization is seen. In group 3, mouth opening is 15 to 25 mm, Christmas is seen, vertical fibrous bands could be palpated and firmly attached to the underlying tissue, unable to blow out their cheeks and whistle. In the soft palate, the fibrous bands were seen to radiate from the pterygomandibular raphe or the anterior fascial pillars in a scar-like appearance. A trophy of the vermilion border is seen. In unilateral posterior cheek involvement with only ipsilateral involvement of the fascial pillars and soft palate and opening is reduced to 15 to 18 mm. In this, histopathologically, juxtaepithelial hyalinization is seen. Thickened collagen bundles are fairly describable, separated by edema. Blood vessels constriction, fibrocytes with scanty cytoplasm and spindle-shaped nuclei. And atrophic epithelium with the loss of retipex is seen. Blood Muscle fibers seem to be interspersed with thickened and dense collagen fibers. The degeneration of muscle fibers being in group 4, it can be classified into A and B. In advanced cases, clinical features are stiffness, inelasticity of oral mucosa, trismus, mouth opening 2 to 15 mm, forces thickened, shortened, and firm on palpation. Uvula was seen to be involved with shrunken, small, and fibrous bands. Tongue movement restricted, papillary atrophy is seen. 
lips circular band felt around the entire mouth difficult intraoral examination is c and in group 4b it is advanced cases with pre malignant and malignant changes that is osmf and leukoplakia and osmf and squamous cell carcinoma histopathologically hyalinization of collagen bundles a smooth sheet obliteration of blood vessels and decreased or loss of melanocytes a feature which explains the clinically observable loss of pigment absence of fibroblasts within the hyalinized zones total loss of epithelial red tip pegs and extensive degeneration of muscle fibers is seen now we'll see the investigations to do for oral submucous fibrosis first is a complete blood count and second is biopsy in this we can do punch biopsy and incisional biopsy as we have seen the clinical features histological features investigations for osmf now we'll see how to do the management of osmf patient first we'll advise them to quit the habit and then we'll give them pharmacotherapy after that we can also give it in adjunction with physical therapy and still if the osmf is severe we'll give him surgical treatment for group 1 patients they are advised to quit the habit and then they are given pharmacotherapy with antioxidants which act by scavenging free radical for patients in group 2 and group 3 along with the treatment for stage 1 we'll give intralesional injections of steroid hyaluronidase or placentrex and also give it in combination with physiotherapy patient will be advised for oral exercise for the better results as it is helpful to prevent further restriction of mouth movements and to prevent relapse in this figure we can see intralesional injection 10 mg per ml of steroid with hyaluronidase exactly onto the fibrous bands in multiple areas for group 4 along with the treatment for group 1 surgical treatment is also suggested which is surgical stripping of fibrous bands and grafting them with a partial thickness skin on mucosal grafts buccal pad of fat interpositioning myotomy and nasolabial flap let's summarize what we have learned so far oral submucous fibrosis is prevalent among asians with a betel nut chewing ha- habit it disrupts collagen homeostasis by increasing the production and decreasing the clearance of collagen and inducing structural and compositional abnormalities individuals susceptible to osmf and possibly to the further development of oral squamous cell carcinoma should abandon unhealthy lifestyle practices such as betel nut chewing and tobacco smoking and consume natural foods with anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties So now we know about what is oral submucous fibrosis cl- its clinical features histological features investigations and management thank you